So hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today we have with us Anish, who is a candidate master at Code Forces. Apart from that, he has interned in companies like Microsoft and Media.net. And he's also a problem setter with Lead Code and Scalar. So hi Anish, welcome to the channel. Yeah, hi, hi. Excited about this podcast. Okay, so today we are going to discuss everything about CP, you know, what is CP and you know how to start as a beginner, uh, what are the resources to follow, how to stay consistent, is it necessary for placement and you know how to stay motivated when your rating goes down, everything right from the start to the end. So without wasting any time, let's dive right into the video. So first of all, Anish, what exactly is CP? You know, a lot of people don't even know competitive programming, what is it? Yeah, to be very simple, like CP is like uh, implementing data structures and algorithms in a fast and efficient way and like uh, in a timely manner, like uh, you are given a question, you have to decide like which data structures or algorithms you have to use and just implement it as fast as possible. Okay, so this is a basic overview of CP. So you can say it as a sport, like uh, every sport requires practice, dedication and all. Similarly, CP requires the same. So you can say it's a sport of DSA, like in a very layman term. Yeah, yeah, true, true. So it's basically solving questions in a very fast and efficient manner. And right. sometimes those questions are just based on logic, not even DSA, right? Okay, so, so first okay. of all, how did you start CP? Like right now you're a candidate master, but sometime you must have started. So how was that exactly? So basically, uh, I started CP in my second semester. So like we have a club in uh, our college named Code IST and our seniors told that you can try your hands at CP. It will definitely help you like in many ways. So uh, first of all, I started in Code Forces. I didn't start in HackerDank or Lead Code. I started in Code Forces. So uh, like I used to go and uh, uh, pick the easiest problem. Like uh, problems start from 800 in, in Code Forces. So I used to go and pick the easiest problem, solve it. Like I used to solve like uh, problems of 1800 for a week and then uh, jump to the next difficulty that is 1900. And uh, I continued this like for one year and like I became uh, a candidate master on CF. So that's how I uh, began CP. Like uh, it was just practice. I won't say that means I didn't buy any course or anything. Like it was just pure practice on uh, code forces mainly. But I also used to give contest everywhere like at Coder, code chef. Uh, code forces but uh, for practice i mainly used to do uh, on code so that also answers which platforms are good and uh, okay and which language did you start with like c++ java python this is a very common question yeah like i started in python and i'm still using python and the reason why i use python is that it saves a lot of time like you have to write uh means you have to write a lesser number of code because there are plenty of libraries in Python, but uh, I would say that you should also know C++ if you are a, if your primary language is Python, because in many cases like Python won't help you to solve the problem. Like if there are recursion problems, uh, so deep recursion doesn't run in Python. So you need to know C++ also, but uh, as a beginner, you can start in Python uh, up to expert. You don't need C++. Like uh, uh, if you want to reach expert, you can just do it by Python. Okay. Okay. So great. So uh, yeah, we can start in any language, but C++ is preferable, but it's not mandatory as you said, because you have reached yeah. that level. So, and you know, how many questions did you solve daily? Uh, like it, it varies like here, like now I don't get time to solve anything to be very honest, but like in my second year, like I used to solve around three, four problems daily. Like the key here is that like you have to solve problems outside your comfort zone. Like let's say if you are comfortable at a certain problem, like let's say you can easily solve 1200 rated problems. So try to solve like 1300 or 1400, just like, uh, attend problems, which are just outside your comfort zone, like, uh, doing such problems, uh, like for three or four, like doing three or four such problems will solve the issue. Like you can see a increase in your rating. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. And uh, how important is consistency in, you know, uh, in CP? So were you very consistent? Did you solve problems daily or how was it for you? Uh, like in my second year, I was very consistent. Like I used to solve every day, give every contest. Uh, so in my second year, I would say I was very consistent. Like I did it religiously, uh, but in third and fourth year, like many things came back. So, uh, I lost my consistency, but, uh, 
when i was consistent in my second year then only my rating grew so i lost my consistency in my third and fourth year due to numerous things like internships academics and all so i am still stuck at cm so consistency is very important like uh, uh make sure that even if it is better to practice two problems daily than to uh, practice five problems a week means uh, you practice five problems a single day and do, do nothing for the rest two days it's not good just try to maintain consistency do two problems or one problem at least daily and that will be much better okay, and okay. you know how to stay consistent a lot of people say we have college we have uh, assignments everything so how did you get that motivation to stay uh, i think like uh, your uh, in this case like peer group is very important like if you have a peer group like who are interested in cp like if you have three four friends who are interested in cp so that helps a lot because everyone is talking about cp in that group so you get interested and you keep on solving problems so like have making a group of people who are interested in cp is very important like we also had like three or four people more than three and four people but uh, we had a group that where people were interested in cp so uh, like try to make a group where people are interested in cp they uh, take cp seriously so that helps you to remain consistent and like it also helps us helps you to remain motivated because if uh, two or three people are doing good around you in cp so you will also feel the urge to do good yeah yeah peer group is very important like anything even uh, during our placement preparation we had a peer group so that helps and that gives you that motivation is you know next level i must say so first uh, another very important question is should you give all contests like if you are a beginner so should you give all contests Uh, i would say that yes like uh, means try to attend as much contest as you can and the most important thing is that after giving the contest of uh, solve them like if you can't solve a uh, problem in a contest after the contest see the editorial and try to absolve that so yes you should give all the contest like if you if you are getting time to give a contest just go and give it doesn't matter what your rating is means what your rating is or don't think that my rating might fall just go and give the contest if you get time Okay, so as a newbie, should you give div one, div two contests also? Uh, yeah, like uh, for a newbie, like you are not allowed to give div one, so you can give okay. div two and div three or div four. So you can uh, like give uh, all the three contests. Okay, so so means just if you get time, just go and give any contest you are allowed. Got That's it, the thing. And uh, how do you maintain a balance between you know giving contests and learning new stuff like uh, you know learning new topics, say? so basically there are around uh, two or three contests per week so on contest uh, day you just give contest and you can uh, leave like you means it's up to you that whether you want to practice on that day or not so on days where there are no contest so just go and practice and if you are practicing problems outside your comfort zone you have to learn new topics so on contest days you can just give the contest on other days you can just practice learn new topics implement them as simple as that okay okay and for learning new topics say i want to learn binary search so what resources did you follow to learn new topics uh, i think like uh, one of the very best websites are uh, cp algorithms like uh, i feel it much better than gfg also like because the explanations and the implementations are much better there and like everything required in cp can be found there so if you complete everything uh, there in cp algorithms you can even become red so everything is uh, covered in cp algorithms so that's a very good website so every time you see a new topic just go to cp algorithm search for that topic and read it so also uh, gfg is also good but i would prefer cp algorithms and like everyone in our college like uses cp algorithms only so that's one of the very good resources i have used and i would also recommend others okay got it. got it. and for contests as you were saying so what do you do if you know every time you are able to not solve like more than two questions so practice is one thing and apart from that how to stay motivated when your rating goes down you know because that happens a lot i think like if you are uh, focusing too much on rating you should stop doing that because like your initially not, not i am i am telling for the initial level initially you should uh, focus on solving the questions more like if it's okay like if you can't solve in a contest you have solved afterwards it's absolutely fine next time you will solve within the contest okay so initially don't uh, focus much on rating just focus on learning the topics implementing them and practicing them so uh, your uh, rating will grow like if you uh, focus on solving problems rather than focusing on the uh, rating okay so that's the thing like focus on learning and solving problems it's okay like uh, this time you couldn't solve in the contest and you have absolved it 
but it's not okay if you are not absolving it okay so that's not okay you have to so go and uh, so after the contest you have to go and solve the question you couldn't solve within the contest you can do anything like see the tutorial see your friend solution ask from your friend seniors okay, anything okay okay and also uh, that is one thing but as you said that you know you should fall uh, you know solve questions which are a little above your rating so that is fine but should you also solve comp like tag wise because there are tags on good courses so is that uh, like uh, like if you have let's say if you have learned let's say you are doing a problem and let's say you have encountered a new topic let's say topological sort you haven't heard it before so you have learned uh, so you have gone to cp algorithms and learned a uh, to new topic topological sort so in that case you can just uh, short uh, the problems that uses topological sort and solve two or three problems uh, majorly you should do by the uh, difficulty level but when you learn a new topic so just to make sure that you are comfortable implementing the new topic from next time onwards you should just go and practice three four problems uh on that topic okay got it got it so it's basically a balance of both like rating yeah. wise also and learning new topics also now the very important question is competitive programming necessary for placements like on campus or off campus both in both the cases uh, i would say that to some extent it, it is necessary like for companies like uh, google microsoft amazon you definitely don't need like uh, for Uh, fan companies you definitely don't need, but for companies like Media dot Net or like HFTs or let's say Code Nation, like you definitely need CP. The first round is OA and they are tough questions. Okay, uh, every one of us know that, that how difficult is Code Nation contest are like OAs are. Okay, so for uh, some companies like Code Nation, uh, some HFTs also have OAs which have CP questions and like Media dot Net. So plenty of companies have the first round as OA. and there you definitely need cp proper cp dsa won't means help you in those uh, online coding rounds even in cred also like the first round was a cp contest like they took people from a code chef contest okay so uh, like for the fan companies you don't need it you can skip that but for companies like uh, code nation hfts media.net you definitely need it and, and so that's it it depends on the company you are targeting Okay, okay, and also if you are targeting off campus, then your resume gets good if you are probably yeah, an expert yeah. or something. So that you know, hidden advantage Helps. is always there, and in general, your problem solving yeah. skills are going to increase. So that is true. Also, like uh, if you are applying for any other role, so if you have done well in ICPC, so that also gives you recognition. Like because because ICPC is not only recognized in India, like it's also recognized outside. So if you have done well in ICPC, let's say if you have gone to like Asia West Finals or something like that, so it will be like very helpful to get your resume shortlisted. Definitely. Definitely. And uh, you know, uh, so this is the last question, and I did. I am not like the answer is very obvious, but still people are you know always debating on this. So is Like there's a CP versus B, you know, development. This whole debate. So, what is your take on that? So, which uh, of them is more important? Like every both of them are important because when you are doing something in a company, like I am interning in Media dot Net, I have interned in Microsoft. Uh, while developing things, I have never used CP. I have used development. I have used like uh, oops, uh, like making APIs and everything. So, when you are working in a company, CP doesn't uh, help you. So, their development skills help you. but for some cases like getting the jobs or getting the offers cp helps you okay so and also another thing here is that like cp helps you to uh, sharpen your problem solving skills so it also helps you to like sharpen your dsa skills and dsa is required in development okay so for example i am uh, currently using like uh, q and like double ended q in my uh, current project in media.net like in microsoft i uh, microsoft uh, internship project i have used uh, like uh, a similar a uh, data structure similar to stack okay so uh, dsa are used in development so cp also helps you to uh, sharpen your dsa skills but hardcore cp is not required like while uh, doing a full time job okay so cp is a sport like you you should enjoy it while doing it and it also helps you to keep your problem solving skills high okay and it also helps to get your resume shortlisted it gives an impression that you are smart enough to do something so that's the role of cp in tech i believe but yeah you should try your hands in development also like you shouldn't uh, devote your 100% time to cp you should explore hackathons and do development open source also so it uh, depends on you like in which thing you are more interested yeah so i think you can explore everything and try to you know see which you are interested in and it's more important to you know be good at one thing rather than you know getting into everything because uh, like yeah 
yeah i think like you should be like a master of something and like you should know a few other things like you should really master development of cp and just explore the other one so that i think should be the best option yeah okay so great uh, thank you for answering so many questions and uh, if you guys have any more questions you can ask in the comments so thank you anish uh, it was a wonderful session and uh, thank you. yeah do like share and subscribe to the channel so bye anish yeah bye